okay going back to 20 seconds and now they are highlighted so we have add missing open id client setting step registration uh, my kill fixed a missing registration good add culture argument to localization set filter localization set filter culture argument from Mathieu Péon who is a, a colleague from um, Jean-Philippe fixing the localization set feature to add a new parameter to it ignoring all app data folders from myself because I do back up my app data with app data underscore something when I want to create a new recipe and I don't want to lose my previous recipe if I'm doing another test or another work. Uh, fixing logging usages. Yeah, I saw that in the PR, so I'm like, I looked everywhere. Uh, it was not correctly used. The idea is when you use logger.anything, debugger or whatever, never use interpolated strings. Just use a standard string and it, with the logger, it looks like an interpolated string, but it's not. It's just that when this thing will actually be logged, it will inject this value as the, it's, it's like zero. Okay. Um, so it will inject this value here. So this is like by order zero, one, two, three, but it's with a name so that it's structured logging. So when you have a structured logger, you will be able to see columns with the values here and we'll be able to filter. Um, and the goal of not using interpolated strings in logger is that if the logger is not enabled, there will be no allocation. Okay, this string is static. It's already allocated and it will be reused. This one will be reallocated for each value every time you call log information, even if it's not logged. That's why you need to use a static string in, in logging, and that's why they created this kind of parameters. Okay, and this name is has to be nice because it will be displayed in a, in a UI when you use structured loggers. Um, and I changed everywhere I saw log something dollar, I changed it. Uh, here, you see it's passing a join array as the content item IDs. So again, no concatenation here, just inject this value here. Here there is a, and oh, yes. So this on the, on the right is not a string. So this will be um, allocating for each call of log debug, in which case you do is enabled log debug. So this way you will prevent the allocation of the array if debug is not enabled. Otherwise, you don't need to do that because log debug will do it. But here, I want to prevent this array from being allocated and everywhere. Okay. So just a reminder. I've already mentioned that, but everyone makes a mistake all the time. I did too until I learned that. And uh, so for next time, fixing admin menu cache by me. I have no idea. What is that about? Apparently, a new version of your SQL. Oh, yes, and Jean Thierry is following up with uh, Custom PR. So, I had um, a talk with Jean Thierry about um, his PR on uh, tokens and caching techniques that he was refactoring. And then I was working on, um, on an issue about this service, I mean. And I found a bug in the cache, and then I remember that he was working on something similar. And um, so the idea is that we are caching some things sometimes, like in this case, an object that comes from database, but we are also updating it. So if we do an update on the object that we took from the cache, we are updating the cached object. And this cached object is known by YesSQL in the identity map. So it, it, uh, YesSQL knows about this object. And there might be conflicts because we are modifying an object that comes from a previous session that we keep in memory, that we are updating and trying to update with another session. And the other session says, well, 
I never saw this object you're trying to update. You should have loaded it before. So the pattern that uh, I made here and I've agreed with on um, uh, I've agreed on with uh, Gentry is to have something in the cache that is disconnected, detached, um, and then we can reuse it, but just for read. So this object is, doesn't know anymore about sessions and SQL, and SQL doesn't know about this object. If, if we try to save it, it will create a new one. But if we try to update these kind of things, we should not take the one from the cache, but we should reload it, uh, a clean object, to update it and then save it. Um, so, and that's what that's this pattern that I'm implementing in this PR, and then uh, Chantieri is doing that for everything else uh, that is using memory cache um, in Orchard Core. Uh, and also, sometimes these kind of things will be prevented if we store these things in a distributed cache, which is a serializable cache, because everything will be serialized, and you are just accessing a, a clone, technically, of what we loaded from database but yeah but sometimes we don't want to deserialize the object all the time we just want to pick it up it has to be closed and deserialized already so it's about choices but as long as they um, so here you see now we have two methods we have a get admin menu and a load admin menu load admin menu will always load from database get will get you either from database and cache it or the cached version but this one should not be updated. And the documentation specifies it in the get call. Don't change, don't modify this object. It's coming from the cache. Um, OK, that's the idea. Um, Morgle pipeline fixes from DIN. And I think Antoine approved. It was working for him, so I merged. Fixing uh, and meaning that there was some conf some bad sources for npm like inside the module at the root and sometimes it was not correctly working so we fixed all these things there are multiple commits like this uh, fixing pluralization um, this one is because um, sometimes it wasn't working with the default html and string localizers i added some tests um, like this, like this. This is the HTML localizer that should encode the string, and the string localizer which is below should not encode the string. And but this test is testing that we can do plurals with parameters, and not just one parameter, but more parameters. This was the issue. So the zero being always the count, and then starting from one all the parameters that you pass in the plural call and this was not working so this is six now fix graphql queries for lowercase field names from gems someone find an issue that the this property well one of them well everything apparently was not working i container or something so he fixed that we trust him he owns that part um, lots of branches, and we'll take a look right after. A specific bootstrap CSS, such that we can use a message class and not the bootstrap classes. Also, um, each theme has its own um, bootstrap specific CSS instead of having it in the resource manager, the main resource manifest. Each theme has its own, has its own now which makes more sense. Um, and fixing a path. OK, version of bootstrap OC. OK, 1, 0, 0, 0, because, yeah, 1. Yeah, that's what I meant when I said 1. So good job fixing it. I didn't see that you fixed it. Um, then tweak Gulp to work with new bootstrap OC as CSS. OK, so applying, reacting to um, Antoine's changes. And the agency's styling of a section was renamed to page section. I don't remember this one, but OK. Fixing styling. Use email settings from app settings, but I think this has been reverted because it's breaking the settings page. 
default pattern for throughout and alias. Um, just that now when we add the um, alias part or the auto route, we don't have to go to the settings. It will use a standard pattern, which is good. Uh, probably I should update the documentation I made, or someone can update it, uh, to not have to do that because it was a step in my articles. It was annoying, I agree, good job and also using um, code me or for alias. I also saw that when I worked on the on the doc that it was not uh, consistent with autoroute. Good. Um, add configuration section to set up docs. So docs, but on a thing that is no more uh, supported, I think. We'll see, add a link to that. And um, this link is wrong, and I discovered it uh, yesterday. I fixed it. Sometime someone made a, a stream on Twitch to to follow the tutorial, and it didn't work. And I saw that this link was wrong, but this wasn't the issue. I will see later. Improving indexing performance. Uh, someone um, sent me their app data with 10,000 content items and they had an issue with um, indexing no with um, something else you will say there. with what with dapper he has an issue with with the fact that when trying to load one of the indexing task record it was saying that it could not parse the date time which was turned out in sqlite um, and while doing that while trying to reprove the issue it, it was taking 10 minutes to index all these content items, and it was so long for me. So I looked at what we could do, and now it's taking 20 seconds. Uh, so it's better. And Jasmine also reapplied that in his branch with the improved um, Lucene Index Manager. Um, and the issue was in Dapper, actually. The bug was in Dapper, so uh, I sent a PR to Dapper. It has been merged, but it's not yet released on NuGet.org. The issue was that when it's trying to load a record as a class, predefined class with a daytime property, it will not set the daytime path culture invariant. It will use a current culture. And this user was in Iranian culture, uh, Farsi culture, sorry, Farsi culture, which will not work with date times that will be before noon because it adds a custom prefix and then it will fail. If he was using English, it will work. So I fixed it in Dapper waiting for the fix to be merged into uh, NuGet.org. Then removing the, um, new the new settings that actually break the admin page. Then uh, fixed duplicate alias. Good job. So it's reusing the same logic as in AutoRoute. If you have conflicting aliases, it will increment uh, a suffix dash one, dash two, dash three, until there is no more conflict and use it when you auto-generate it. Good job. Uh, updating the, um, the tutorial. And so the, 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 the streamer I was mentioning, the guy lost one hour because he could not even start the, the, the site because in the stream before that, in the article before that, it says change the startup CS or the configure services and do dot add orchard orchard CMS. Is it actually add orchard core CMS? Maybe, whatever. And uh, he didn't follow exactly what was written and he skipped dot add resource pages, which was failing then. So I had a, did a warning, remove also add resource pages from the generated template. Um, and then I fixed the link to the tutorial um, twice because I made a mistake. Uh, then updating SQL Jasmine, which is fixing what? Oh, uh, fixing binary serialization. You could use the object type to serialize a binary uh, file or binary uh, byte array, but you could not use the byte array type when you add a colon. So I fixed it and also I did more tests and fixed some issues with uh, uh, big files. So it's proof. Uh, it's what? 
bulletproof, what bulletproof, whatever. No bugs. Um, then what do we have on dev branch? Users, um, user validation when you change the username or the email. You could not do that, it's fixed, the validation. So it's checking the correct fields using correct services. Avoid infinite recursion in triglate model, which is a bug that was filed by PVS, a software that does a static code analysis to find common issues. And in this case, a, a potential infinite recursion. Um, new structure for documentation that we merged uh, 20 minutes ago. Thank you, Antoine. I assume it should be built now, so Antoine will paste the link and we'll click on it to see what's new. Um, oh, it doesn't contain the material design, I assume. Widgets, new content card shape to make flow editor extensible. Big PR flows is getting better and better. It's almost better than the layout in Orchard 1 now and still being based on widgets. Um, so that's awesome. Then Antoine pasted the link. Did he? He did. Which looks like. Oh, it's Ori Matter. So that's the new structure with uh, links at the top about Orchard Core, getting started, how to guide, key topics, and reference. All the previous docs is mostly on reference, like per module. So here you will see all the modules and their reference documentation. In the how to guides, we saw that I think two weeks ago, the how to guides, um, getting started articles. And I think the one for decouple should be uh, getting started. It's not on how to guide, it's longer, it's a tutorial, so everything should be moved there. How to guides, I really, a specific topic, you see, creating a website, adding a menu item, installing localization. It's really goal oriented. And these ones are longer tutorials um, explaining the concepts and so on. These are just explaining core concepts. Um, maybe, we, is there a link to the blog post? You can share it again if you want. Uh, if people miss that, uh, a blog post explaining how this um, that, well, a blog post that we followed that explains how documentation should be organized. Thank you, Antoine. There is also a YouTube video, if you prefer videos about that. This guy that wrote a blog post uh, owns the community of Django and, um, and gives, and, and I think it's very nice. And what's good is that we talked about it a week before uh, I find this article on Hacker News and then I shared it with Antoine. I'm like, does it remind you something? And this is exactly what we were uh, thinking of doing. So that's great. Um, yes, and then also the new material des uh, design. Uh, yeah. Um, and this one, this is the one I updated and, and the warning I added is that is it not Add Orchard Core CMS? It's Add Orchard CMS, or did I make a, a typo when I created that? That's weird. Yes. I will check uh, if it's well merged. Merged? What? Uh, because I moved the decoupled CMS. Uh, no. No, it's uh, good because that is new, so that worked. But uh, I, I'm wondering if I make. If I made a mistake when I, it's not Orchard Core here, maybe. Um, and that also is an issue, actually, the, the guy had an issue with the dot .core. Um, Jean Thierry, I know you are listening tomorrow, and when you listen to it, can you just check what's wrong with setting up a site with dot .core? This way, I think we are missing a, something that the setup cannot start in this package. If you just put CMS, it works, but CMS.core doesn't work, and it should work in this case. Uh, it's kind of sad. So that might be wrong also. Or we need to fix the dot .core to work in this case. Um, no, we need we need more content. So it's, it looks nice, it's organized. We need more content. Yes, because each key topic needs uh, more, uh, more descriptions um, to explain uh, the, the main concepts. Yeah. So key topics here, you see, is 
yeah so customize display localize your site so what do you want to do with an orchard site these are all the key topics and then inside we can have subsections and so on good job Antoine thank you um, demos demos starting with Antoine do you have to demo something or do you need yes. to talk yes you need to talk about something okay let me share make you a presenter Good. So I assume you want to talk, maybe I'm wrong, about the menu and, mm -hmm. and the menu. Uh, and uh, maybe before, uh, the Thromboweek update. Nah. After no? we look at we look at the the PRs after if we have time. We okay. can do it like I want to see also Bertrand stuff and I want to cut it short. So uh, and it's good that Bertrand is here because not the last time he joined the meeting, but the time before <laughs> we we designed the menu and he was there yeah. and he had opinions. So yeah. that's good. Three years ago we had the, the yeah. same discussion. So. Uh, this is the current menu in admin when every feature is uh, enabled. Mm -hmm. So you have the main one uh, and then you want each authentication. Which, which I don't understand. Why did they put that here? I mean, mm, my kill each yeah, time you make uh, a new one. He had a new icon and mm -hmm. at the yeah. main level. Definitely should be in configuration somewhere. Configuration, security, or authentication, whatever. Yeah. Some of them don't have many uh, sub items, mm -hmm. uh, but configuration has many sub items and multiple uh, levels sometimes. So my suggestion is to reorganize the new uh, the admin menu and try to organize it uh, with the, the same key topics that we made for the documentation, the new documentation. So the key topics are how you manage your content how you can uh, customize, uh, customize the display, uh, localize an application, uh, add uh, media, uh, navigate into your, your site, uh, query data in SQL or Lucene, uh, add some security, and manage uh, your, work, your workflows. So it will look like this, you have the content, and inside also I put uh, both the media library link and the content definition. So, so this is a main menu with four sub items. Then there is a menu about uh, design in which you will find uh, a link to manage the themes and then uh, the widgets and the two menus about uh, templates. What is widget? Layers? Uh, layers, yes. At the end, it's uh, layers. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what you do. You yeah. Um, and sometimes you can have uh, specific settings. So for example, in design, yeah. We will manage uh, the zones for the widgets, uh, which is not under widgets, yes. kind of weird because it's the layer zones. Well, that's yeah, but that's details we can talk about later about small changes. I just want to see the overall reorganization. Okay, then there are um, settings about configurations, settings about configuration. 
which is what we have today, but that, that's, that feels weird when we say it. Uh, but uh, before there was uh, like a dozen of settings. And now uh, there are only... Uh, Shouldn't you have the same key topics under settings? Uh, what do you mean? Like content settings, design settings, I don't know, workflow settings, security settings, I don't know, things, something like that. I just move some some of them into other menus, and this one are the remaining ones. Okay. So in some configuration, you can uh, configure the features, the recipes, the tenant, um, and as I explained in the the issue, maybe we could move uh, some uh, some menus, some menu items like GraphQL in an API one API one, and maybe uh, task and import export in a tools. What is tasks? Uh, background tasks. Tasks. <coughs> so it was for the configuration. About search, you will be able to. Yeah, I will, I will keep import export in the content. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. I, and I have the mic on, and nobody else is saying anything, so I'm like. Right. Yeah, but yeah, okay, let's go on with your explanation and maybe we'll all have some suggestions or... Yeah. So in search, there, is the, there are the settings about uh, which field you are indexing. There are the queries you can uh, edit in admin. There are the test page to, to run a SQL query. And there are... Uh, the two pages about Lucene, uh, which are uh, the Lucene indices and the test page to, to query uh, uh, in Lucene. So this is about search. Security, good. Yes, finally, security. Okay, that makes sense. I like the security. I like just security, just keep security. Remove the rest. <laughs> So in authentication, every uh, okay. single uh, feature about authentication. Uh, in the settings, a few ones like HTTPS, login, recapture, and the two about registration and uh, reset password. Uh, we'll find users and roles, and I'll also put uh, OpenID uh, inside it. And security, and finally workflows, Which is and work stuff. Don't have uh, any sub items. Mm -hmm. And the two first one are admin menu, uh, custom admin menus. And the first one is okay. So article and table. menu it depends on the recipe. It's just that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you go back on the previous one? Just to go back on what we had decided to do on the other side, the current status. Uh, so what we said if I re so let's remove let's not take into account theme github google microsoft and open id twitter blah blah the decision was to have the new content content definition configuration and themes and 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 but it was when we had nothing <laughs> uh, I and and my feedback would be that themes nobody goes there ever and yet it's the main menu um, content definition 
yeah, that's where to have it there because they're just a too too done to some menus and it could be into content if which is what you did. Then then that's it. Security I like it because yeah that's yeah I'm I'm not opposed to, to the to the change. There might be some small it's not a big difference from what we had before, it's just reorganizing. We still have content, we still have configuration. Um, now the theme is designed but contains more stuff than just the themes. Um, you move the search and security at the top level. Search is, is weird because we also have SQL. I'm not sure it should be data, but search because I don't know. But that's a detail. The grouping is fine because that's what we do. Also put a GraphQL inside? Or? Yes, it could be data slash search or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, I'm, I'm afraid that the, the, the icon plus the word search will let people think it's just about search, where it's not, so they will not look for that. So I, just my feedback. Um, only the user study will say it, like give it to someone who doesn't know. What do they think? How do they, yeah. Mm -hmm. How do they find something? That's the idea. Media cache, I was wondering why is it there and it's actually to refresh the cache. I'm not sure it should be in content. Mm -hmm. The rest is fine. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I, I, I like it. Uh, I, as long as it doesn't break with um, stuff that was de decided three years ago. And I think it's not really. We still have the design slash theme, configuration, content. Uh, big changes, content definition is moved under content, which is okay. And the two new first level items, search and uh, security, which I think is fine. Then we can iterate over small changes and move things around inside. Um, but overall, I think it's good. But uh, pick, which is that configuration usually is at the bottom. This is where you would expect it to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was wondering that that search um, entry. Um, is there any plan to have uh, a search box actually for the menu at some point? Um, we talked about it recently when we had to create a zone in the header so we could inject a search box inside that. That will not be in the menu. That will, that, so that's why you see the search icon and the search icon. Then you're like, well, it's to search content. No, it's to manage. Yeah, your... yeah you, you, you want to have search content, but yes. also being able, being able, not necessarily a search box, actually. It could be just you start typing something, it filters the menu. Um, yeah. How oh, that the search of the menu itself? I see. Yeah. Like you do in Android, you have an Android phone, so yeah, you yeah, it's just, yeah, to to make things faster. And so the, you, the, the if you don't know where a menu entry is, because that menu is starting to be pretty big, uh, at least you can you can find something by keyboard. Like we all do Windows key, um, we type the name of the application, right? someone file an issue about that so we don't forget and I'm wondering where it should be I can file an issue and um, should it be the same text box to search content and to search um, pages with just a drop down on the right to say I don't know or autocomplete I don't know or digit to search box yeah let's file an issue to see what people have to say and how to design it in the in the admin? Um, anyone else? So Dean says some of the sub items need to be sorted alphabetically rather than by order. I like it. Um, we had settings. What I mean, if you could eventually have a page with features module settings. So much menu items. Design category is good. People like it. 
theme should probably be under configuration authentication is good um, I think feature module is really top level like plugin on WordPress I'm not sure because it's not something you go very frequently you go soon on that but then you don't use it anymore Mm -hmm. the feature slash module so it should be easily findable under configuration probably at the top level but that's it then okay good awesome thank you I think you will merge it nobody is saying don't do that so let's do it <laughs> um, then are you done with your Demo, Antoine? Mm, yeah. yes. Thank you. We'll do the other thing, which is what? What did you say we say? We'll do later. We'll do something later. Uh, Bertrand, your turn. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you the progress on uh, the commerce module. So just to uh, give a quick quick recap of uh, what this is for people who are not aware of this uh, effort. Uh, why isn't it showing my window? Right. Can you see it? Nope. No. It says now sharing, but maybe you might notice some features aren't available because Bertrand Leroy isn't using Skype for business <laughs> I am using Skype for business and it says you are sharing or maybe it's just me I can see it oh I can't what should I do maybe you're not using Skype for business tum, and, tum, but, tum. but the issue is that I'm I am but I'm I'm recording so if I can't yeah that's an issue and I can't I and if I leave, the recording is broken, so... Uh, feel free to start sharing. Okay, I'll try again. Let, let me try the desktop. Maybe that will work better. Uh, is it? I don't know which monitor it is. I just use whatever. Okay, it seems like sharing the whole monitor is going to work a little better, hopefully. Yeah, so while this is this is going on, I'll, I'll give a quick recap. So uh, there used to be a, a module for um, Orchard TMS, the old one, uh, Orchard 1X, that was called Noisette Commerce, which is a, a module that I developed based on some it, old code. From, sorry. It looks like it's sharing something, but it's black for me. Yeah, it still says loading. It's in that for me too. Yeah, see, if, if that doesn't work, I'll try the um, the, the web client. But uh, it was, it's better than before for me. But yeah, it's, I see a, a square and then it's black in the middle. Maybe the thing you shared is not visible, or you have something above it. And I swear I'm using Skype for business. Yeah, we tried to. What's going on here? Uh, okay, I'm trying the, the web uh, client, so I, I might get disconnected for a second. It wants me to install. Wants me to install it again. Yeah, so uh, I built this module based loosely based on some uh, code that Sipke had built at first, but it, it moved way, way beyond that. Uh, and uh, I actually built a whole business uh, on, on that uh, little module uh, back then. Uh, but it was Orchard 1. So uh, some time ago, we, I and a few other uh, people who were contributing to the, uh, the old uh, commerce module, uh, we decided to uh, do something for Orchard Core. And uh, uh, we debated whether we should build something new from scratch or uh, try to move the old module. And we decided to rewrite. Um, 
and at the same time I'm trying to install that thing. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to show today, hopefully, is uh, the, the current state of that rewrite. rewrite. Um, uh, so there are a few uh, design goals here. Uh, the first goal uh, of the module, um, the one that we want to reach first, is to have uh, something that enables you to develop uh, a commerce site using your chart core. So that means that it's not necessarily going to be turnkey solutions for commerce uh, at first. Eventually, it will become that, but at first, we want to, uh, to enable people to, to build. Um, another design goal is to leverage what Orchard has as much as possible. So uh, products are going to be uh, content items. Uh, we're going to use tax taxonomy and ev everything that we can reuse, uh, we are going to reuse. Um, uh, I'm not having any success in studying that thing. Let me try again. We also try on a different screen. Maybe it was the screen. <laughs> the screen? Well, when I say the screen, not the screen, the physical screen, but the logical one where you were displaying. Uh -huh. Now it's, uh, it, what, what's Skype meetings? Is that different? So this is the... Let me... Okay. Can hear myself with an echo. Yeah, we can hear you. Sharing controls are dis disabled by, by policy. You need to make the new me. Oh, you have a new, I see, the new you. You are presenting. Yeah, I'm a guest, so. Oh, that's why you have echo because you're two. Yeah. Yeah, I have two Skypes now. Can you still hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's only the new me. Um, let's see. That works better. Okay, so if that still doesn't work, uh, let's postpone this to uh, next week. And, okay, uh, we'll do a nice one next week. I'm presenting. Yeah, we are presenting a black square. That's what. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Maybe I'm the thing that you one, shared. One last thing and then. Maybe the thing that you shared, like the screen or the window or whatever is, is wrong or has something on it. It happens to us when we share a window, but it's not in the foreground. And then it's just black. But, yeah. I'm sharing screen now, not, not a window. Still nothing? Nope. Okay, I'm going to stop. And last try, and then it will be next week. Should I start it to, to rejoin? Well, you want me to hang up can. and rejoin? You can, yeah. Another option is I we connect to, to Teams and I share your screen. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I can see. Good. You see? Boom.
Oh. We can see teams and sky for business. Okay, it's good now. Okay, you can go on. It's a weird square still. You have a square resolution. It's nice to meet you. Awesome. All right. Uh, <laughs> whatever you did works. Okay. Uh, do we still have time? Yeah. I'll be late. That's okay. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I want to I want to show is I want to explain what a product is. Um, I've I've uh, I've had a lot of different experiences with uh, managing products on on the CMS, and uh, I find that uh, actually a product is something very nebulous that not everybody agrees what it is. So um, in in our chart core commerce, it also is something very nebulous. Basically, any content type uh, can, can become a product. Um, uh, it's just a matter of having the product part on it, and the product part basically has nothing. It has, it has a SKU, which is an identifier for your product, and that is pretty much it. So if we look at this uh, product uh, type, it has a bunch of usual uh, parts, but it also has that uh, product part. Uh, and um, I also added the notion of um, a, a product attribute field. So uh, let me show you what this is actually. So here I actually have two different uh, product types because what I want to show, I think that is very important, which is that the structure of your product is not necessarily going to be homogeneous. Think about, let's say, Amazon, for example, they, they sell millions, if not billions of products, I don't know, but uh, they sell TVs and they sell, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, household products. Uh, all those things are, are described differently. So you should be able have different descriptions for different types of products. So for example, here I created another um, type of, uh, of content, which is a t-shirt. The t-shirt has a different set of fields, uh, has a different uh, structure and definition. And this is not just for the description of the product, it's also, it also defines how you are going to be able to order those products. Let, let me show you exactly what this means. So here, uh, uh, I, I have just a, a, a query that is querying the database for anything that has uh, that is a product. And I have two different uh, products that are two different content types. So this is uh, a content item of type t-shirt. And it has those fields. And those fields are customization for the end user. Uh, this basically uh, enables you to uh, to have configurators for your product. So you can order a product, uh, you can change its size, or you can personalize it uh, with a, a custom message, or you can choose the color. And if we go back to the, uh, the definition of those fields, you can see those fields here. So for size, uh, find that as a, a text attribute field that has some predefined values. And those are my t-shirt sizes. Particularly to make a product configurable by the end user, you add one of those fields, and this is entirely extensible. You can create your own uh, types of, uh, of fields. So let's see what happens if I uh, create a new shirt and I add it to the cart. So I left the quantity uh, one here, and uh, we have a, a shopping cart here. So I can also modify the. Uh, Quantities. So this this is all as you as you would expect. I can remove uh, and I can add a new product. Um, but basically, uh, the the main idea here is that products are any item with a product part, and uh, you can enrich them with configurability uh, for the end user. So you can add pretty much any kind of uh, custom, customization that you want. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't you even be on time for your, your meeting. Okay. So this is the current state of the, uh, of the work on the commerce module. Um, uh, we can probably uh, provide the, the uh, link to the project. It's Orchard Core, it's on GitHub, it's under the Orchard CMS organization. It's called orchardcore.commerce. 
uh, and uh, yeah, next steps are probably going to be checkout. Uh, there is no checkout currently, as you can see. You can add stuff to a card, but you cannot buy them, really. Uh, and uh, the checkout process is actually going to be using workflows. Uh, because checkout is also a process that is that has a lot of variation from uh, company to company. So we want to give people a lot of flexibility about how they build checkout. So we are going to use uh, workflows for that. That's about it. So the field is a variant, a variation of the, the type. Okay. Well, there is a content item, but it can still... Okay, I see. Yeah, so uh, another thing that I haven't said, let, let's say, for example, that I, may, I, I create a new, uh, I add something differently configured. Uh, because my cart, the cart uh, is the same are going like to be different uh, line items in the, uh, in the shopping cart. And yeah, you, yeah. Can so that, the, you can have, okay, and you can have the same, yeah, the same Mukren and Agla views, but with two different sets of fields in this case. Parameters, yeah. 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 And uh, so currently you cannot associate a price to those options, but eventually you will be able to do that. So for example, let's say that uh, the Excel uh, size is more expensive mm -hmm. or the, the color red is more expensive. You, you'll be able to do that as well. How will you do that with like a JavaScript pattern that you could write to define the rules that might be the easiest thing to do? Um, that I, I, I'm not sure yet. Or ex I mean, extensible probably. There are some logic, and one of the logic can be, oh, let's write it in JavaScript, or let's so import it from. There, there is already the idea of a, of a price provider. Okay. So uh, you can already have a component that uh, provides a, a price mm -hmm. to any product, and you, you actually have a collection of prices, and we have strategies that select which price uh, to use. Uh, this is also uh, taking the currency into account. You can have different currencies. Uh, so you could have different prices in different currencies. It's very, very, very flexible. And it's designed to be super flexible. Cool. You can cool. you can build any kind of commerce site. With Amazon, let's build Amazon. We'll see. Yeah, I think a lot about Amazon. <laughs> Amazon sucks. I <laughs> hope we can do much better than that. <laughs> I mean, they have a scale that you won't be able to handle. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we are working on it. We are working on uh, it. Basically, one thing that I really dislike about Amazon, and I, I've, I've been a seller on Amazon, so uh, I know how bad their, uh, their UI is, which is that basically their products are uh, an aggregate of all the product types. So you don't, you don't have this idea that different products have different structures. They are pretty much all the same, and they are a kitchen sink of all the properties of all the products. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're selling, I don't know, rubber gloves, you, you have TV size as a property of it. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So if you want to do a, a custom uh, rendering for specific products, then you can. So if you want to do very vertical e-commerce size, you can do that. Yeah. OK, awesome. Thanks. It's Th items. Thanks a lot. All good. Uh, thanks, everyone. See you next week at the at the the old time because we will move to uh, um, non daylight saving time uh, next uh, Sunday. Okay. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye.